All right, everyone, we're back out here on Havasu with Nick. We got his boy again this, got his boy this time. He's gonna help us out. We're gonna go chase down some of these uh, trophy red deer. We're gonna try for a three pounder today. You think we can do it? I think we get it. Lucky. There you go. We find, we find them a lot, man. So we're gonna, we're gonna try our hardest for a giant. I'm just talking about an absolute Goliath. Let's go. <laughs> all right, sounds good. You heard it. That's all, I can't top that. Let's go. Hey guys, Nick Young Outdoors with you today. ACC rods, really good for crappie, any kind of panfish. They feel really nice, you know. And today we're out here for the red ear. I wanna give you some information on them. So these red ear, when you are fishing for them, they really tick little. So it, it could be a TT tick like, you know, and it can be a giant five pounder. You just never know with them. So, you know, you really, you really never want to underestimate a fish, especially a red ear, because they get big, you know. And something else about the red ear is in the winter time, man, they, they, they don't even care. They, they go away. They go up the river or something. We, we don't have much time to find that out because, you know, the seasons change a lot, you know, switches to bass in the winter time. And, um, you know, these red ear, you don't want to keep them because when they, the population has really went down with the red ear. And when you keep them even something under 12 inches, why man, just don't keep the red ear. Go for the striper, there's tons of those. You can catch 100 in one day. I mean, the, keep 100 of those, not 100 of the red ear. I mean. So so tell the camera, what's, what's your biggest red ear sunfish out here? My Jackson? biggest red ear sunfish is 4'2", and they get bigger than that. They get up to like five pounds, and the record is six. And you know, if you want to catch a big red ear, go out with me and him. This guy right here. Pro, pro right here. So, um, yeah, that's uh, my how many, red ear. How many red ear have you broke off personally? Oh, eight pound uh, test line. I can remember eight or nine that I've broken off. So that's why you can't underestimate the fish. <laughs> <laughs> they pull hard, don't they? Very hard. All right. And they get bigger on the way up, surprisingly. I think God just puts a little sprinkle on them, just makes them get bigger. <laughs> so we're gonna go out and chase down some big fish today, huh? We're gonna go down and try our hardest to get some big ones. All right, man. All right, let's go get them, buddy. Let's go get them. All right. Double. Double on right now if you want a camera. Here, I'll take this one, you take this one. No, no, no. This one's bigger. Okay. okay. I got my fish, bro. Any fish There you go. This is actually a good size still. Like, that is a nice... Yeah, there's nice... nothing wrong with that. Good job, bro. Hold it up for us. this giant right here. I'm okay, dude. I'm okay. Get that drone right over top of this fish if you want. You can see him in the water. Let me grab it. Where's, do we got him? Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna get him, buddy. Let me get him. How was that, double up father-son? I know, I, I was going for years. And then this, my, I felt my rod starting to tingle. And then I'm like, oh no. So I had to go for mine, get mine in really quick. And I'm like, nothing wrong with this. Like, this is still a nice fish for, you know, any kind of bluegill, you know? This is really nice still. And, Let's, 
this one could probably swallow it. I'm not gonna lie, but <laughs> if you guys can get a kid out fishing, it's it's well worth it. This is my son. We've made a lot of lifelong memories together. This is a special thing for him and I. We're best friends, and you know, just any kid, get them out fishing. They'll never forget it. You know, these are these are memories they'll take with them their whole life. So I encourage you guys to take a kid fishing. Yours, another kid, maybe a kid down the road that. It doesn't get a chance to get out, but get him out on the water and, and make some memories of, of a lifetime for him. Yes, sir. All right, let's put him back in the water and let him go. Here. Fishing with my pals. Oh, and he's on, buddy. Oh, it's a fast fish. We just swing him in the boat. Oh, that's my though. That's my. That's my. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Take this one, Eddie. Know how big he is? You take it for the camera. Oh, that big, actually. Oh, that's a nice It's still full. That's that's a nice bluegill right there. Take the line like this, put it in your hands just like this, open up his mouth, and then I follow that line down to the bend of the hook. I go into where the bend of the hook is, I push in and pull out on my finger just like that. So you can remove, to, remove a hook uh, from a fish's mouth that's choked it without doing any damage to the fish, without hurting yourself. That hook point rides right there. So we got that out of there, and now we can get this fish back in the water. Here's okay, your fish. Okay, guys, I gotta tell you something. That is my fish, okay? That is my fish, remember. <laughs> This dude has nothing to do with it except taking it off. <laughs> All right, guys, so we spotted some fish up here. Um, we, we spooked them, so we're letting them rest for a minute. Uh, let them rest for a minute. So after we let them rest for a little while, come back over here, and we're just doing some long casts on them. We got clear water here on Lake Havasu, so everything we do is pretty visual, and the fish are using the site for their benefit too. So we just wanted to sneak back up here do some long casts, just be really patient with these fish, try to get in front of them. So trying to trying to take take advantage of a long cast here and get a big one. It's a giant. Nice fish, buddy. Nice fish, buddy. Bring him to death. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let him turn again. Ooh. Ski him to me. Ski him. Ski him. Keep his head above water. Keep his head above water. Keep his head above water. Nice quality Havasu. Ready or sunfish here. We got a colorful male here. Probably getting ready to move in and spawn. The the water temperatures that, that we're looking here for these red ear, right about the 56, 57 degree mark, they'll start making their move for the shallows. They'll come in sun and try to gain their composure and get warm. We're pushing mid 60s now, high 60s, and we're just seeing more and more fish move up every day. The first set of fish that you're gonna see move up are typically the bigger ones. Once you start seeing a lot of smaller fish move up, you know that the the major part of the waves have started to come in. So we want it, we want to see those probably mid 60s and we even want to see some some low 70s is prime for targeting these beautiful Havasu red ear sunfish. So this is one of my spots here. It's just flooded with underwater boxes. You guys will see on the footage that uh, 
They've planted these boxes throughout the lake for fish cover, habitat, uh, spawning grounds for the fry to get into and get away from the other fish. It's a theory that that's part of the reason that we have such big red ear in here. The mussel shells adhere to the boxes and the red ear go in there and pluck them off the boxes and they can use the boxes for cover and get their food off of them at the same time. So it's one of the, one of the contributions they say to why our red ear are so big in here. So you can target these structures, they're extremely snaggy, but if you, if you fish, you know, common collect around them, throw to the side, and just kind of let your bait soak, you can get away with fishing next to them and maybe get a big fish of a lifetime out of one of them. So check them out on the footage and you'll see what we're talking about. Lots of brush and lots of boxes in this lake. Yeah. All right, guys, we're out here. Of course, we're using these ACC. They're, they're crappie rods, but these are panfish, and, and they're fun for any style of panfish. And, and these red are big, but um, we're, I'm using the 6.6 one piece. He likes the 7.6. He's been using the 6.6 and the 7.6, just because just it's just got more leverage, and, and yeah. just you're used to a longer just rod. Used to a longer rod, but it sure was doing the job. I mean, getting bit and just lifting into that fish and having it load up and that backbone but a lot of flex too and super light rods and sensitive you know I've been fishing out here for three years for these panfish non-stop and I've always used my conventional bass rods and getting out here at these these crappie sticks it's a game changer for sure they're it's so easy they're feel. so light and well, easy yeah, on you you can feel any little tap or tick you know and and uh, like I said just just being lightweight and you know we're fishing for a, a panfish we're not fishing for a big striper or a bass or something like that so these really are a good tool for the job when those bluegill bite, it's like it's like electricity yeah. in your hand. You're like I've been holding mine just like this, a piece yeah. of the line and the and the blank right here, and I'm it's very yeah. sensitive and has a good sense of feel to it. So. Yeah, I was surprised how fun it was to catch these big red ear on. It's just fun. Any, like I said, any pan fish, anything, and these are big big pan fish. So it, it makes it the the fight probably a lot more fun than a big old bass rod. Huh? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. It's. Uh, I think it takes away from the fight using a big heavy rod like that, you know, yeah. it takes away from the fun of it, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we came out and did it and, and brought these rods out and got you to hold on to them and use them, so. That's a nice bluegill. That's a bluegill right there. All right, everyone, we're wrapping up day two with Nick Young Outdoors. And his boy here, he's a good help. Oh, I uh, we caught some good red ear. Guys, these are a once in a lifetime uh, anomaly. They're, they're crazy. It's not fast and furious. And we're, we're actually here, what, a couple weeks early before they actually bed. Yeah, this is, this is a pre-spawn pattern right now for these it, red ears. They had a really cold, wet spring. And normally they're doing what they're supposed to be doing this time of year. But hey, we are definitely coming back and I want to appreciate you guys. Tell them how to reach you and it's good to meet you and good to become friends with you guys and we'll definitely do it again. Sure, if you wanna uh, come out with us, go on a fishing trip with us, call 541-709-4628 for booking. If you wanna talk fishing, 541-709-1542, that's my personal number. We'd love to get you guys out on the lake. We also do striper fishing trips here. We do uh, largemouth, smallmouth uh, fishing trips. We also guide for king salmon on the Oregon coast, Gold Beach, Oregon. So. Give us a call for your next fishing adventure.